Hi, this is the final part of our three-part series, Pets, Property and Pirouettes. I say pirouettes, we're actually going over onto the musical side and we'll be talking about choreography uh, on a future episode. But I'm very lucky to have Marvin Ayres in his studio, so to speak, and uh, we're going to chat a little bit about his profession. Yeah. I've got a lot of respect for you. Last week when we were talking about property, mm. um, we were discussing how much time it takes and you have to have a passion and so certain creativity for it mm. and you've managed to link the two you do your music you've also got property mm. how do you feel you can work the two and do you think one maybe detracts from the other from time to time and if you had your choice would you rather be a, a fulfilled musician with very little income mm. or doing what you're doing now with more secure future <sighs> These aren't the easy questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. me, the better way to answer that question is that doing property gave me more freedom. Um, okay. Without delving into the... Oh, you know, delve, go on. <laughs> into the I really like it when you Marvin probe. Marvin psyche. Oh, yeah. Which is a dangerous place to be. It is a dangerous you. place to be, especially me. Um, you mentioned to me once before that you would rather be known when you're dead <laughs> with respect than to compromise your talent for commercial success whilst mm. you're alive. Does that still stand and why? More so than ever, yeah. Hello and welcome to the second episode of Pets, Property and Pirouettes. Today we're going to be talking about something a little less frivolous than pet owning, property owning. Where it's going, what the market is doing, whether you should hold on to your property, whether you should view it as an investment, or whether you should just enjoy living in the home that you've bought. Why are we even talking about property? Well, my background was as an actress, a choreographer, a very precarious profession to say the least, and one had to look at how to subsidise one's income. To be able to go into a property, have the vision, the creativity, see where the money is to be made, are all important factors. And this is where you need time. So if you're resting, any guys out there, this is a great way to actually utilise your time. The other thing is, you do need a brain for figures. You need to be able to calculate percentages, work out what your gain may be. Don't go into it blindly and rely on other people. Be a little bit shrewd. Know what the market is and know what you're capable of, how much time you're going to be able to put into it. That's why being an actress or a choreographer or a musician is fantastic because with so much free time on our hands, we can actually concentrate on the property issues that need thinking about. Hello and welcome to the first episodes of Pet, Property and Pirouettes. Today we're going to be talking about responsible pet ownership and owning a pet must not be taken lightly no matter what the size. No matter how well trained your dog is, do not be mistaken into thinking you can actually walk your dog without a lead. Any distraction will be disastrous. A bird, a car, another dog on the other side of the road, and they're gone. You could have two years of perfectly walking your dog, but it's very dangerous. Here we are in sunny Clapham. There are plenty of lovely places to walk your dog in this area, but always be a responsible dog owner and keep a lookout for other dogs. They may seem friendly, but when you've got a small dog like Crombie, you can never ever be too vigilant. You may have to pay a premium to get a beautiful little Yorkshire Terrier like Crombie, as you would any pedigree dog. And do always be a responsible dog owner. This is the end of Pets, Property and Pirouettes. See you next time.